My name is Dr. Frank Herr. I'm the uh, department head for ocean battle space sensing at the Office of Naval Research. The reason why I'm out here at the Naval Boys Graduate School is to review and uh, to learn about the, uh, the great work that's being done in a program that, that we're sponsoring at Office of Naval Research called Cruiser. The Consortium for Robotics and Unmanned Systems Education and Research, or CRUISER's mission here at MPS, is to provide a collaborative environment for the advancement of educational and research endeavors across the Navy and Marine Corps. I'm Professor Ray Bittner of the Naval Postgraduate School, and I direct the Consortium for Robotics and Unmanned Systems Education and Research, and I'm the director for the Advanced Robotic Systems Engineering Laboratory, Arsenal, that's conducting the experiment today. Cruiser efforts range from work in the Arctic to underwater research, operating south of Monterey, and flying out of Camp Roberts, in which MPS's unmanned aerial vehicles can be taught missions that the military cares about. The two teams here that we have today is the Naval Postgraduate School and the Georgia Tech Research Institute. We are uh, having a friendly competition with the Naval Postgraduate School. We're flying some of our swarming algorithms against their swarming algorithms uh, in a, a friendly uh, swarm versus swarm competition. One of the best things about this type of activity and taking place in this kind of environment here at Camp Roberts is we're able to bring together uh, great teams and a failure tolerant environment without the pressures that would go with a, uh, a military exercise or a formal demonstration somewhere. They're going to launch different autonomous airplane vehicles and what we're doing is testing the behavior of those vehicles and how they can be controlled by communicating with each other rather than each of them being controlled by an operator. We sort of wall ourselves off at Georgia Tech in academia uh, without having access to other groups of people that have real field experience. So a lot of the faculty at NPS have actually been out in, in the field and uh, know how the real world works. And so interacting with them has been you know, really enlightening. Back in the Pentagon, we've been working on a roadmap and a set of goals for the Department of the Navy. But actually, being able to go out here and seeing actual hardware, these vehicles, Zephyrs, that are actually going to fly, is something that we don't get enough opportunity to take place. NPS has provided both the experimental equipment and we have the support structure to run these entire experiments. So we have been sort of the glue uh, that brings together people from industry, from other defense-related research groups, such as DARPA, uh, and bring them together and provide the testbed and innovation center that allows us to do these sorts of experiments. A measure of success for me is to highlight if we learn something new, whether that's on the processes on the ground, whether that's how we operate with swarms in the air, showcasing something that's never been done before, and then uh, being able to take away some insights that might ultimately have operational impact in the future. NPS has been kind of a leader in, in swarming for a while. They first flew a fleet of 50 uh, aircraft in August of 2015. Uh, we reached out to them, for example, with some problems we've had with uh, communications. There's a lot of radio noise that you can imagine that happens when you have a lot of radios on a lot of different robots that all power up in the same area. And, and uh, NPS actually helped us at GTRI work through some of those issues. We have uh, the will of the leadership in the Department of the Navy to commit to a future of unmanned systems, uh, the technology that's been developed in our universities, uh, our warfare centers, uh, and institutions like the Naval Postgraduate School and DARPA. And I think that the folks that are thinking about how we're going to operate uh, in the future realize that there is a huge part to be played by um, autonomous systems in the future. To get a chance to sit and talk to Dr. Ray Bittner and actually see the hardware and see the people that he is most proud of and has had a chance to work with, the folks that are actually doing the work, that's been fantastic. Actually talking to uh, Dr. Timothy Chung, who really started a lot of this effort, to meet him finally uh, after about a year and three months has been uh, something that I'm really happy that I can check off my uh, bucket list.